leaders in Kampala came out in arms protesting against the system which is being used to collect taxes, which is known as IFRIS. IFRIS is a system which uh, reduces leakages in the, in the taxes collected in any country. And it was introduced like four years ago. Now it is being implemented even on small retailer shops. So in this episode, I've come to talk about why are, pro, are traders resisting IFRIS despite making it able for them to do bookkeeping but also reduce on the tickets on tax leakages. What the URA can do to make IFRIS a success, but most importantly, the certain materials we can learn from the taxation and the economics of our country. But before I do this, I want to let you know that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you're watching this video from a different platform, please head on to YouTube, type in Sula Mawagari. There's a lot of content of this nature. If geopolitics and economics is what you want, this will be definitely the right channel for you to subscribe to. First of all, there's no doubt that IFRIS is one of the best systems which is used around the globe to collect taxes from different countries. But we must ask ourselves, why is it that traders in Uganda are protesting against it? Because they see it as a system which is, re which is reducing their profitability in the businesses. And I'm going to explain this extensively. For example, if, if I go as a business partner and I bring something, let me say a glass for sale. If I buy it 5,000 shillings and I sell it 10,000 shillings, okay, it means that I've made a profit margin of 5,000 shillings. But remember, when I make a profit margin of 5,000 shillings, I may decide to declare that I've made 2,000 shillings as profit. But when I'm, I'm using IFRIS, it will capture that I've made 5,000 shillings and I will be eligible to pay income tax. So traders are seeing as if the, the, their profit is being encroached on because any business must pay income tax and I'm going to give you the rates. Okay? First of all, if you look at the rest of income tax, the threshold of income tax, you clearly see that any business that makes a gross turnover of 10 million shillings pays zero taxes, 10 million shillings in a year. And any business which makes between 10 million shillings to 30 million shillings pays 4.0% of annual turnover. Okay, when they have records, when they don't have records, they are given a fine of 80,000 shillings. You clearly see that a fine of 80,000 shillings is much more higher if you decide to pay tax you may even pay something like 40 or 30. For a business that makes 30 million shillings between 30 million shillings and 50 million shillings it pays 80 shillings and and 0.5 percent of their annual turnover in excess okay but if they don't have records they must pay 200,000 shillings. A business which earns between 50 million shillings and 80, and 80 million shillings pays 180 plus 0.6% of annual turnover. Without recourse, they are fined 400,000 shillings. So, you clearly see that if you have IFRIS, it will put out correct information and you pay a, an exact income tax, which you may not be paying. And people see as if their profits are being encroached on because people used to declare less because our business a, a, a cycle in Uganda does not benefit business growth. So they declare less so that they can pay le less income tax. It's among the reasons as to why they are coming out to riot about the IFRIS, which is coming out to give the actual income and the actual taxes which are, are supposed to be paid. Okay? Secondly, increase is, IFRIS is also able to calculate VAT. VAT is value added tax which is paid by the consumer. And for me, for those who don't understand VAT, for example, if I am I, I, I buy a, a, a back cloth from someone and I go on to make it uh, 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 to make a blanket out of it, I've added value. So when a, a person who's selling me a back a back cloth must withheld VAT of 18%. When I'm selling a blanket to someone, a retailer, he must also pay me 18% of that value I'm selling. 
when the retailer is saying the same blanket to the final consumer the final consumer also pays him 18 percent in this scenario we have very many people in the chapter saying who don't pay the vat this goes back that if a person makes a back growth sells me a back growth and i'm able to make a blanket out of it i will sell it to the retailer without the 18 percent and the retailer will also say to the final consumer that 18 percent for example if the retailer got a blanket at ten thousand and decides to sell it at fifteen thousand it will take five thousand as profits but remember that five thousand if he's in on ifris he will have to pay the eighteen thousand eighteen percent vat which reduce on the profit margin okay are you understanding me because vat is a a, a, a price a tax paid by the final consumer so it means that if the trader is on efris either he has to do one of the two things one he will either have to increase the price of the blanket from fifteen thousand to also be able to add on the 18 percent that is like two that is like uh uh, uh three thousand so that he can set it eighteen thousand so that he can be able to pay the vat so it will bring the increase in prices or you will have to tell his final consumer that i'm selling the blanket at fifteen thousand, but you must pay for that the three thousand so that the consumer can know the price is going to pay so it means that the taxman must not only teach the business community but even the consumer one of the problems the taxman is doing that is teaching only the business partners but even the consumer must know that he's supposed to bear the 18 percent vat i've ever gone somewhere and someone told me that this bottles cost this amount of money but you must pay for vat the good thing i knew about taxes but if you tell that thing to a person who knows nothing about taxes he may run away from you okay so the tax must be taught to both business partners and consumers worldwide and that is uganda if indeed vat must must succeed secondly since this is a tax video i also want want to show you how different salary earners are taxed in uganda everyone who's paid by an organization or a business must pay 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 is pay as you earn if you earn any money from a business if your employer pays you must pay pay as you earn and the rates of pay as you earn are like this if you earn from zero to two hundred and thirty five thousand you pay zero taxes if you earn two hundred thirty five thousand to three hundred thirty five thousand you 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 pay ten percent of pay and that is i think like ten thousand as tax if you earn three thousand three hundred three thirty five thousand to four hundred ten thousand you pay ten percent of the taxable income twenty percent of the taxable income plus twenty percent that will be like twenty five thousand if i'm not mistaken if you pay uh if you earn uh 410 to 10 million you pay the taxable income 30 percent to twenty five thousand. so so it will depend on the amount of money you earn for example if if you earn 10 million the taxable income is 10 million minus the four hundred ten thousand times 30 percent plus 25 you will be paying taxes of like two million nine hundred zero two thousand that is if you earn ten million if you earn four hundred and ten thousand you'll be paying taxes of twenty five thousand okay if you earn three hundred and thirty five thousand you'll be paying taxes of ten thousand so it depends on the amount you earn if you are paid in a tax bracket between two hundred and thirty five thousand to three hundred and thirty five thousand you get the amount that you are paid you deduct it 235,000 the amount that is remaining you multiply it by 10%. Okay? Each, those are the rates of the taxable income in Uganda and everyone who gets a payment from a particular business must pay pay. Those are the rest of taxation. But in Uganda I think the problem is not with taxation. The problem is the taxes what they they do after they go in the consolidated 
in the consolidated fund. In Uganda is where we see the president uses two billions daily. In Uganda is where we see parliamentary commissioners gifting gifting themselves five hundred million things and four hundred million shillings. In Uganda is where we see taxpayers' money being spent on frivolous things, yet the taxman continues to bear the burden. So to me I think Taxes may not be the problem, but one, the URM must sensitize not only business tra traders, but also consumers. Because sometimes they bear the ultimate price, but uh, the, ultimate, the ultimate price. Also, the taxes which are collected, government must make it, make it such that the taxes are visible in service delivery. So that if you go in a hospital, there, there's everything to use. Okay? Of course, that's my opinion. Drop me a comments by commenting about this. Thank you very much for listening in. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, I employ you to subscribe, like, and comment so that I can be motivated to do more of such videos. I'll see you on another one. Peace.